Mr. Avery Smith. He's going to talk about how data visualization is more than a chart. Now, Avery is obsessed with data. He's the founder of an analytics firm, Snow Data Science, and an online data project camp called Data Career Jumpstart. He worked previously as a data scientist for an oil giant, um, ExxonMobil, and a biotech startup called VaporSense. I'm going to go ahead and bring up Avery up on our, on our virtual stage here. Hello, hello, Avery. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Well, first, I should let people know that you didn't know you were going to speak at the Dedicated Expo <laughs> until about three hours ago when you just opened up your eyes. So thank you for, for jumping in sort of last minute here. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's fun to uh, kind of kind of play at last minute. So hopefully my presentation is good enough for the uh, spontaneity, but just know if it's not, I only had like two hours. So, <laughs> Well, I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and jump off the virtual stage and let you take it away. Sweet. Sounds good. So hello, everyone. Um, my name is Avery Smith. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about data visualization more than a chart. I'm going to do this kind of with two personalities. There's cool Avery, and then there is uh, there's nerdy Avery right here. Okay, these are two different personalities in two different ways to approach things. So uh, have patience with me when nerdy Avery is on stage because it's kind of it's kind of a bit. So um, all right, here we go. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Blockbuster and the metrics of Blockbuster. So it started in 1986. It grew to a lot of stores uh, and by like 6,000 stores in 2005. Uh, and then by 2015, there was only 25 stores left. Okay. So this is, this is, this is boring Avery. Okay. That's how you give a boring presentation. Okay. But if you have to talk about something, don't talk about it like this, talk about it like this instead. Okay. And this is where data visualization can be more than a chart. So on this right-hand side of the screen, I have the rise and fall of Blockbuster. Blockbuster. For those who don't know, Blockbuster was like a DVD, uh, VHS, like video rental store um, in the United States. And anyone who's like, who's, you know, anyone remembers Blockbuster. If you're under the age of like 20, maybe you don't remember Blockbuster. But if you're, uh, if you're older than me, you remember Blockbuster, all right? Um, so this tells the story of the rise and fall of Blockbuster a lot more interesting than that last slide did. And what I want you guys to do is try to give presentations like this instead of the one that Nerdy Avery gave. Always be cool, Avery, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. By the way, this is from V1 Analytics. So in 1987, we see some blockbusters popping up. We have like 50, lots in Texas, lots in California, kind of some in the, the Midwest over here. And then by 1999, we're almost to 400 stores. You see them popping up all over the United States. You see them popping up where I'm at in Utah. You see them popping up where Kate's at in New York or New Jersey, I guess now. By 1990, we're up to 1,300 stores and rising. You can see the number of stores down here and the date right here. And we're almost to 2,000 stores. You can see there's a bunch over here, like in Dallas, a bunch over here in San Diego, a bunch over here, like I guess that's San Francisco. I don't know. I don't know my California geography that well. You see a bunch in Florida. We're almost to 2,500 stores, 2,600 stores. I was born in 1995. So June, that's my birthday right there. We have almost 3,000 Blockbuster stores. Okay. And you can see them popping up. We don't see many in, in Montana. I don't know if, if David Langer is here, but not a ton in Montana, not a ton in Idaho, not a ton in uh, Wyoming for Tom Ives. You see these uh, growing, growing. I see Gray still has their Blockbuster card. That's hilarious. We're in 1999, we're up to 4,000 stores. This is insane. Like, look at, if you just like pick one area, just pick this area and just watch it. There's a store. There's a store. There's a store, there's a store, there's a store. Like just in one city, there's just stores popping up like crazy. By 2001, we're at 5,300 stores. Once again, if you just like pick a spot, it just pops up. There's a store. This is about the peak in 2003, okay? We're at 5,600 stores. What you're going to see is a huge decline, okay? This is what's gonna happen is we're at 5,700 stores. And this is when Netflix becomes a thing. They start sending DVDs to people. They start like, you know, doing their whole service and you're going to see blockbusters go down from here. Now we're at 5,000 in, in 2007. Just watch this number. It's going to keep plummeting. You're going to see them pop off the map. 2008, 
We're about to have the uh, economic crisis, right? So watch these things. Just watch one area. Here's Houston, where I used to live. Pop one, pop one, pop one. They just keep falling off the map. And you can see we're almost down to half. We're at 3,300 right here. And you can just look over here. Just look at all these ones fall off the map. We're at 1,000. Netflix is at huge. It's just growing, killing Blockbuster. We're down to 1,800. In 2013, we're down to 500. Kind of sad, the fall of Blockbuster right here. And by 2014, we're already down to 38 stores. 2015, 24 stores. So do you see the difference between these two different ways that Cool Avery and Nerdy Avery presented? One told a story that you were engaged with, and the other one was a lot more boring and basic. It was just like reading slides, right? But now you can really see, oh, wow, there's only two stores left in 2018. It really gives you a feel for what actually happened to the story and allows you to understand what's going on. So you can either use slides or you can use data visualization to try to tell that story. Um, so basically, I have another one, COVID in the US. I'm going to skip that one because of time. But I highly suggest watching this video called How the Virus Won. It's actually not a video. Definitely check that out afterwards. Um, the last one I'll just show you guys um, is Ford stock. Okay. So you could, oh, this is, this is nerdy Avery. Nerdy Avery could say, yeah, Ford's an American car company started around $11. It took a big dip and it's been coming back and people are excited about the electric truck and it rose to $14 an hour. Or you could be cool Avery. And you can look at this. This is from stockarts.com. I'm a huge fan of theirs, kind of a fanboy. And you might say, Avery, this doesn't look like data visualization. And that's because it is, look at this, okay? It is actually a landscape, but the shape of the mountain, the jags here are actually the stock price. So I think this is $14 over here. This is like $11. Here's the big dive it took and then it's been slowly coming back. So these mountains are actually the stock price of Ford. And you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. That's pretty sweet. Um, this, the trees down here, you'll also notice have shape to it. I think that's daily volume. So how many times the stock was traded? So the bigger the tree, the more that the more times that day that stock was traded. And I also think the the this little landscape over here represents something. I don't actually remember what it represents. So that's where this kind of falls short. Is you have to you have to actually know <laughs> what it represents. But my point is, if you have to do this or this, always choose the second one. Uh, data stories are fun. They're, they're memorable and they get your point across a lot better than just doing a blank PowerPoint slide. So that's basically my talk. Data viz is for humans to digest information. We as humans use our eyes to digest. It's super important. Um, so like imagine trying to drive without being able to see, that's the same thing. Imagine driving, trying to drive your business or your job without being able to see. And we use data viz to see what's going on. So if you want to get started with data viz, these are my best resources on the left-hand side. You can take a little screenshot. Um, you guys can check some of these out. You can try making your own. I really like Flourish. Or of course, you can check out Kate's uh, data dashboard uh, in the Dedicated Academy that will help you learn you know, data storytelling or one of these data to dashboard courses. I teach the Python and R one. Um, and you can always, you know, I love to post about data visualization. So you can always check out some of my stuff, follow me on LinkedIn. And if you're interested in having a data career, I also have the data career podcast or data career jumpstart, which we can talk about offline. But I just hope you guys take away from this. Don't be, don't be nerdy Avery. Okay. Don't be nerdy Avery. Be cool Avery and use data visualization to tell a story instead of telling a slide. So uh, I look forward to seeing your guys' uh, new data visualizations and, and tag me when you make them. Okay, I want to see him. I absolutely love your presentation, Avery. Thank you. I, I sort of didn't want it to end. I'm like, oh, wow, we're, we're at time already. And I know you didn't really have time to prepare, but it seemed like you were extremely prepared. So <laughs> thank you so much. We had, we had a comment here that I definitely resonate with. And, you know, it says, no one explained the importance of data visualization like this. This is amazing. I think everyone really loved the approach. Uh, we have people saying that nerdy and cool would make him me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can be both, I guess. Both is okay as well. Just just don't be boring. Be exciting. That's what I should have said. Sorry. Yes, yes, ex exactly, exactly. And I think this was really exciting for us to see the differences between kind of the, the boring side of data visualization and the exciting side of uh, data visualization added with 
some data storytelling. You kind of sounded like a sports broadcaster. Once the glasses yes. came off, you went to the mic and you're like, and then this happened, this happened. <laughs> like when you cast the ball that way. <laughs> so I, I yeah, I love it. I think it's so fun. It just tells, I mean, that's what sports is, right? It's, sports is basically a story, so. Yes, absolutely. Yes, everyone's just loving your um, presentation. A lot of A lot of things coming in. Uh, quick question here from Tristan. Will you be sharing any of the slides? I think hit up Avery directly if you want actual slides. I usually yeah. share the recordings, which you'll be able to have after the session. Um, but Avery, I had a question for you in case people are, you know, trying to learn how to tell data stories and data visualization. And I, I do thank you for sharing some of my courses there from the academy. Where, where do you think people can go to to get some data to play with? Oh, I, I love going to Kaggle.com and playing with the data sets there. So definitely check it out, Kaggle, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. And also something that people don't know, Google has a search engine, right, that you guys access every day. But Google also has a data set search engine. So it actually searches exclusively for data sets. Um, that's also a good resource to, to, to go find data to play with. Yes, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, all right, I'm going to... Read one last comment here from Samad. He loved the, your talk, short, fun, Thanks, and well-delivered presentation. So thank you again. And guys, follow Avery Smith on LinkedIn. I know you're on Instagram and Data Career Jumpstart. Do you want to just take a minute and tell people what Data Career Jumpstart is? I know it's sort of new, but it's exciting. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's on my hat right here. We got Data Career oh, Jumpstart. Go. Uh, it's, I call it a project camp. So you have boot camps, right? But this is a project camp where the best way to learn data is by doing projects. And the best way to market yourself as any sort of professional is having an online portfolio. It just makes you look very good. So Data Career Jumpstart is basically teaching you A to Z, all things data, data science, machine learning, SQL, data visualization, descriptive analytics. But we do so only by doing projects that we add to our portfolio. So no exercises, no homework, only projects. Learn as you go. Um, it's been a lot of fun. We just, we just started, uh, I guess, what, a month ago, a month and a half. Um, it's been a lot of fun so far. So if you're definitely, if you're interested and you want to learn data science, send me a DM and we can talk more about it offline. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Avery. I will Thank see you, you online.